Let's continue with energy and phase changes looking at liquid to gas transitions. This brings us to a definition, the boiling point. The boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure within the liquid equals the external pressure. The energy required to vaporize a substance at its boiling point is known as the enthalpy of vaporization. And of course, evaporating material requires energy and condensing gases requires removing energy. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the normal boiling point. Normal refers to the boiling point at one atmosphere. So once again, here is a selection of different atoms and molecules and their enthalpies of vaporization and boiling points. We're talking about the phase change from liquid to gas. So as you can see, neon has a very low enthalpy of vaporization and a very low boiling point. But as one increases the mass and the intermolecular forces, the enthalpy of vaporization increases and the boiling point increases. Liquids, when they are heated, do not remain consistently a liquid and then just all of a sudden release gas when they reach their boiling point. Liquids continually will release a little bit of gas, and this is known as the vapor pressure, defined as the pressure of gas in equilibrium with a liquid. So here's the vapor pressure of water versus temperature. As you might imagine, very cold water has a very low vapor pressure. Not many gas molecules escape. So we might draw it like this, where most of the water is in the liquid phase, and there are a few gas molecules that have managed to escape the boundaries of the liquid. However, as one increases the temperature, you get to the point where many gas molecules are escaping from the surface of the liquid. So at higher temperature, more vapor molecules are above the liquid level. Liquids always have some vapor pressure, even before they are officially boiling. So here is some content for the future meteorologists in the audience. What are the pressure of water and the dew point in a system in which the relative humidity is 27.2% at 85 degrees Celsius? Well, first of all, if the outdoor temperature is 85 degrees Celsius, I hope we're on a different planet, not our own, because that would be very, very hot outside. But let's say we are able to colonize other worlds. The relative humidity is defined as the observed pressure of the water over the maximum pressure of the water at that temperature times 100 degrees Celsius. So I'll place my relative humidity here at 27.2. Now I need to look up a value on the chart. This value is the maximum vapor pressure of water at 85 degrees Celsius, and that value is 433.6. There it is. The maximum vapor pressure water can have above the liquid at 85 degrees Celsius is 433.6. Now I just need to solve for the observed vapor pressure of water. So I will multiply 0.272 times 433.6, and I will get an observed vapor pressure of 118. The next part of this question asks for the dew point. What happens at the dew point? Well, dew forms, meaning it's almost ready to rain. So what we need to do is find the temperature at which atmospheric water starts to condense, meaning we are at 100% humidity. So this value of 118, we need to go back to the chart and look for it. And there it is. It's next to 55 degrees Celsius. So at 55 degrees Celsius, it will start to rain. So just to recap on this mythical planet, where the outdoor temperature is 85 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 27.2%, maximum vapor pressure of water at 85 is 433.6.
So 27.2% of that is 118. And that means the temperature needs to drop from 85 to 55 in order for rain to start. Maybe you've heard in weather forecasts that a low dew point means that the relative humidity is low. So here's a question for you on our planet. The typical temperature in Nolens, I can say that because my sister lives in Louisiana, is 30 degrees Celsius, and the typical humidity is 85%. At what temperature will it rain? This is a two-step problem. So here is our formula. Let me fill in the values. The 85 goes in the relative humidity slot. Now we need to go back to the chart to find the maximum pressure of water at 30 degrees Celsius. The value we need is 31.8. So now please solve for the observed pressure of water. And once you've solved for that, go back to the chart and find the temperature on the chart that has this pressure. The pressure is between two different temperature values, so just pick a value between those two temperatures and that will be your correct answer. In this question, we'd like to know, on a winter day in Raleigh, the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius and the water vapor pressure is 5.5 millimeters of mercury. What is the relative humidity? Here is our formula. Our observed vapor pressure is 5.5. We're going to have to look up the maximum pressure of water at 15 degrees Celsius. So let's go back to the chart. This value appears to be 12.8. So please solve for the relative humidity. Back to our phase diagram, this is what the red line is telling us, that at any temperature, liquid has a particular vapor pressure, and anywhere on the red line is where liquid and gas are in equilibrium. Evaporation and condensation are the processes that will occur. So once again, this is a pictogram for carbon tetrachloride. If I pick a point on the red line, at one atmosphere, the vapor pressure is 77 degrees Celsius. So that means that carbon tetrachloride boils at 77 degrees Celsius. What if I pick a different point on the line? How about this point? At 1.5 atmospheres, when the pressure increases, the boiling point also increases to 90 degrees Celsius. So perhaps you've heard of pressure cookers. They cook food faster because they are at higher pressure, so the water's boiling point will be higher. And perhaps those of you who enjoy camping in the mountains realize that at lower pressure, boiling points are lower, so food has to be cooked longer. Here are some select vapor pressures at room temperature to give you an idea of how intermolecular forces play a role in this. You notice that carbon dioxide, which has very low intermolecular forces, has a large vapor pressure at room temperature, whereas water has great intermolecular forces and has a lower vapor pressure at room temperature. So this brings up the relationship between vapor pressure and intermolecular forces. I have two mystery liquids here, liquid A, which has a few gas molecules above it, and liquid B, which has more gas molecules above it. So the hopefully easy question is, which liquid has the higher vapor pressure? The next question is a little bit more challenging. Which liquid has the stronger intermolecular forces? Remember that the higher the vapor pressure, the weaker the intermolecular forces because more liquid escapes to gas. So you want the picture with the stronger intermolecular forces where it's more difficult for the gas to escape. 
This last question is going to take you back to some compounds that we have worked with before. We want to link the container to the substance. So maybe you remember an earlier question where you evaluated dimethyl ether and ethanol to determine which one had the higher boiling point, which means you should know their relative intermolecular forces. Please allow me to remind you that molecules with a high boiling point will have strong intermolecular forces and therefore a low vapor pressure. Boiling point and vapor pressure are inversely related. 